I think we'll get started, otherwise we'll still be here at lunchtime. <laughs> Today, um, what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about blended learning. Now, before I get going, um, I've been, for the last couple of days, walking in. It's been gorgeous weather, and I'm a recent convert to listening to podcasts as I walk. Um, a friend of mine, just we, we went on a long journey, and he played me a couple of the TED Talks, and I was like... Oh, wow, this is great. Um, yesterday, I was walking along listening to a guy in America talk about teachers coming out of training and they can all use the technology. They can, they can use all of the, the word applications and so on and so forth. But when it comes to actually enhancing learning experiences with it, they, they tend to fall down a bit. And then today, I was walking in and one of the guys says, it's not about the ICT, it's about behaviour. It's about relationships and forging um, social networks and working with each other through these wonderful enabling, empowering tools. So this is kind of where I'm coming from when I, when I talk about ICT. So today, what I'd like to do is very, very quickly talk about blended learning. Um, and then move into an example. I was going to talk about something in New Zealand, but I've just come back from six years in Dubai, so I'm just going to give a quick overview of something that we did in Dubai using a framework that I developed to kind of answer the question, where do I start when um, adapting programs or just um, integrating ICT into curricula? So blended learning, you've got a couple of uh, definitions here. I quite like the Heinz and Proctor one because it doesn't just focus on campus and what you can do around um, online and campus. The Heinz and Proctor looks at the fact that it's all parties. It looks at the, the whole notion of culture and society as well as the institution, the ICT and the um, interactions around that. Oh, before I get going, if, if uh, you want to see this, I've got this online in SlideShare and the PB Wiki that the uh, information is all up there, um, it's also on there. So, some of the barriers. Um, I'm not really going to go into this very much, but the whole idea that if you want to go down the blended line, blended learning line, you do need management buy-in, you need faculty buy-in, and it can't just be top-down, it's got to be a sort of a, a whole effort um, with lots of support in there. And I didn't check the sound. Hopefully this will play. If it doesn't, then we'll just, we'll just move on. This is a colleague of mine um, who came very much from a background of not wanting anything to do with technology whatsoever in her teaching, um, right around to a, a complete advocate of ICTs. Let's, I'll see if it works. No? Okay, we'll forget that. What she says, basically, is there's five steps to what she calls enlightenment. And she talks about the fact that when they changed the pigeonholes and started using email, she was really peeved. She was pretty angry about this. Um, and then moves through the steps to the point where she went to China with a colleague of hers who was very techie savvy. And um, a whole heap of the resources they'd been promised weren't there. So he had his laptop and what they did was develop a whole heap of resources whilst on the one hour bus journey from um, where they were to the campus and then gave all of these uh, resources to the students who came and dutifully copied them onto little memory sticks. But she says what it did basically was save their bacon. It meant um, that the students got a whole, whole heap out of this course that they wouldn't otherwise have done so. And they, they, they were really pleased because uh, they also got a very good pass rate for the exams. So. So why would, you, why, you want to, uh, why would you want to bother? Now, I'm, I'm probably preaching to the converted here. <laughs> um, there's 
quite a lot of research now that does look into the effects of ICT on the achievement, student achievement of learning outcomes. Um, a few meta-studies, so you've got, uh, for example, um, uh, I can't remember the names now, Waxman, Lin and Michko in 2003 did a meta-study that did see that there was a small but positive increase of student achievement of learning outcomes when ICT was enhanced into curricula. But, and here's the big caveat, it's kind of how it's used. So if you've got your, your quizzes, they, 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 have a good, they have a place in the learning um, paradigm, but it's very much what the students do around the technology and through the technology rather than with the technology. So this is actually, if you did get a handout, I, I know that they probably ran out. If you did get a handout, that's there. This I put together because I very much wanted to show that the focus, the central focus is pedagogy. So if you are already teaching, if you have resources and you have a notion of how knowledge is constructed, then you can develop ICT enhanced sessions. You just kind of follow the steps and the last thing that you focus on are the tools. Looking at curricula, curricula are also on the move. So you've got technology that's leaping and bounding. Students now go to, into further education and higher education wanting skills that they can then go away with and uh, solve problems, for example. Working groups. So it's not just content focus. Also, employers are demanding that students graduate being able to apply the knowledge that they've learned, the content, and also be able to um, work with peers and, and uh, analyse, evaluate and so on. So this is what I was, I was thinking about with dynamic curricula and thinking how you might use ICT to help students acquire some of these skills. As I mentioned, the model that I've designed started with the question, where do I start? Um, a lot of people that I work with do kind of Oh, no, I, don't, I haven't a clue. So it's a, it's a bit of a tangled web. Um, and the whole notion is that the model itself, which I'll look at in just a second, has the flexibility and adaptability for people to work together collaboratively and think of different ideas, come to a conclusion as to uh, how knowledge is constructed, so they're all teaching from the same page, as it were, and then move through the steps to the point where they have a fully integrated curricula. Or well, that's the theory, anyway. So here's the model. You'll see down this side, you've got your guiding questions. It's, like I say, it's flexible. You don't have to answer every single question. It's mainly sort of food for thought. And then you've got the model, which is the main steps. The bit in the middle is your design part. The bit over to that side is the implementation and evaluation. You'll see there's lots of iteration in there as well, which is partly reflection for yourself, how is this all going, and also partly how the students think it's going. Can I improve this? How can I improve this? Um, do I need to move on to something else? This is the framework that, go, that goes with the guided questions, which you will have a chance to fill in in... Um, a couple of minutes, hopefully. And I also put together an example just to kind of model the sort of answers that you could put. It's not, this is how to fill it in, but if, if you're a bit stuck as to um, the way to go, then th that's why I put this together. So, as I mentioned, I came back from Dubai uh, in March, and I'm working at Unitech in Auckland. We, before I left at Dubai Men's College in Dubai, um, used this model to help, well, we, we developed quite a few courses, but this is one particular research project that we did where we put together four interventions to help students with their writing. So, Dubai Men's College, it was a brand new campus in the middle of the desert. Um, it had wireless connectivity throughout and was rather splendid. Dubai Men's College is part of the Higher Colleges of Technology. There's 14 um, in that region. 
and they're gender specific so you have uh, women's colleges and men's colleges and never the twain shall meet I worked with a rather superb team. Um, they were innovative, inventive. Um, we'd have meetings where people would walk in because we were laughing so much they thought we were having a coffee break. And the whole thing was around this model, we collaborated and we ended up with some things that we did actually find that students were motivated to use and we did actually get some really good results. The students, our students were 70%, um, between the ages of 17 and 20. Um, the rest were mature students and were working, so they were studying part-time. Um, the students tend to come from quite a traditional background where it was teacher-centred and they were really good at rote learning and memorisation, but not so good at self-direction and asking questions. One uh, really fantastic uh, thing that happened just as I got there was they made mandatory um, the ownership of laptops. For students who couldn't afford it, there were scholarships and grants, um, but it meant that every single student had a laptop, and wow, did that make a difference. Which brings me on to the next point. The reason I say about the laptops is it does actually uh, help <clears throat> your design decisions. If students have immediate access to the technology, it does actually help how you put your interactions together and your expectations of how they're going to interact off campus as well. So, we very much wanted to go for an active learning model where initially you've got your teacher helping, guiding and facilitating but then students, through engaging activities, a lot of peer interaction, um, and started to take on board some of those um, higher order thinking skills and critical thinking skills. We wanted them also thinking about the problem with the writing. We had about 25% students failing the high stakes exams at the end of each year because of their writing proficiency. So it's quite a big, it's a big problem. So what we wanted to do is to get them into this uh, reflective, iterative cycle of writing where they saw editing not as one of those dreadful tasks that the teachers insist on, but something that uh, was helping their learning. Now, here's, here's I, I must admit, we were using WebCT. I wasn't allowed to use Moodle. So, um, in WebCT, we built a course called Improve Your Writing and Vocabulary. And in that course, this was sort of a repository, but we were also using the discussion forum. Um, we put in things like uh, how-to videos, which looked at the technology step by step, but it also looked at things like the concepts of writing, um, a, a specific genre of writing. We were also very keen to help them with their vocabulary. We had smart boards there. And what we found was by uh, doing some uh, specific vocabulary instruction using things like smart boards, students could then complete the task and then uh, download their, uh, their interactions and keep them for future reference, which surprisingly they did actually refer to. You can't see this very well, but what I wanted to do was just this was a pre-study survey we did, and the light purpley one near the top, one of the biggest problems they found after spelling was finding their own ideas um, and having the confidence to voice those ideas. So what we decided to do, um, oh, and sorry, this, this, uh, my slides have got a bit mixed up here. This is um, something that we also put together about the videos, I mentioned the videos before. We, the 43% the of students said that they thought videos would help their learning. Um, and we've been using them quite a lot in, in other courses. So that, that was um, pretty good. So that's one, one of the reasons we decided to put that in there. Now moving on to, back to the ideas. Um, we decided to use MSN chat partly because the students are already using MSN chat, but also what we thought was 
Um, I think Martin mentioned it earlier. If you chat, you can then save that chat history. We also, it's informal, um, and we thought students might just go for it for brainstorming ideas. So we put them, put them into groups, they brainstorm ideas, get all the chat histories together, and then collate the ideas. The ideas were then put into WebCT for students to access. So there was that ownership thing. It was kind of like, oh, that, that was my idea. That, that's really cool. Um, and so before they started writing, they already had a good set of ideas. So that wasn't a barrier to their, their writing proficiency. Um, their next step was students using those ideas. There are two students per laptop. Well, they, they quite often had two laptops open. Um, they used a discussion forum to start drafting an essay. So we'd already covered the genre, they got some ideas, they got some vocabulary, and together they posted this into the discussion forum. The following step was peer review. Two things happened. First of all, students went, oh my goodness, so... My, my friends are going to see my writing and immediately went in and started editing and reviewing their stuff to improve it. And we also had a huge discussion as to whose job it was to mark these essays. Um, after a lot of discussion, we worked out that in fact that there was going to be a lot of uh, education value for them and put together some models on how to provide feedback, um, which they, they then used. We ended up, they, they weren't easy on each other, they were quite mean to each other, but the feedback was very constructive and had some good ideas on things they could actually improve on, so that, that was really neat. This, again, you, you won't be able to read this terribly well, but this was the model that we used to help them, so it had things, things to look for and ways of giving formative feedback, so if they wanted to, they could just use chunks of that and adapt it to the things that they wanted to say. So, the, the final bit, what I'd like to do is just tell you a little, very briefly, some of the results that we had. Um, I showed you this before about the videos. Um, we also asked them about discussion boards. Before the study, 9% of them said that they thought discussion boards might help them with their learning. After the interventions, You'll see this goes up to 43%. The videos stayed around the same. But the links to grammar sites, which before they thought were the bee's knees, they, they didn't find very useful at all. So a couple of things here. First of all, students really need to use the tool before they see some value from it. And they need to be guided in the use of that tool and get something out of it. Um, and the second thing is the... The resources like links to sites, yes, they're useful, but the peer interaction and, and the, the uh, socialising seems to, to work so much better in the minds of the students. We also had them fill in a blog after each intervention, um, and they reflected on what they'd done, what they'd learned, that type of thing. And we found that they were very happy with the notion of collaborating. They found that they were able to share ideas. They found that they, or said that they found when they explained something to a peer, that they actually understood it better. And they learned more from that. The scaffolding, all of the videos um, and the discussions and the guidance from the teacher and so on, was also extremely useful. A couple of the frustrations were around technical problems. Um, one of the sessions, the chat didn't work, and we had to go for Plan B, which was uh, using Word documents, which was a sad um, follow-up. But the students coped with it and were very patient. The teachers who were involved in these interventions had some fascinating feedback. A couple, of the, a couple of them were quite um, reserved in their enthusiasm to begin with, let's put it like that. But um, after we'd done this, I, one, one uh, teacher in particular said that her uh, class, usually after 10 minutes, they're going, oh, we need a coffee break, miss, let us go. 
Um, but she was amazed that after an hour in, the, in this type of approach, they were still focused on task and insisting that we give them a little bit longer to do things like edit their, uh, th edit their writing. She was, she was blown away. So, did it actually work? Did it help their writing proficiency? We did find that short term there was some gains in writing proficiency, but there was only four interventions and then um, we kind of ran out of time and resources. I think if we continued along this path, we would have seen um, accumulation of those skills and the skills would have been there for a lot, lot longer. The vocabulary acquisition, uh, we did a retention test and sure enough, they, because they'd been applying it, producing it, using it in many different ways, um, they did actually remember it. So that, that was really neat. Now, I'm going to shut up for a minute <laughs> and I'm going to ask you to have a look at this framework and the model. Now, um, it's been uh, trialled once or well, twice now, uh, once at EFEST and also a little uh, about a week ago at EIT. What I'd like you to do is give it a go and give me some feedback on what you think about it and how I can improve this. Um, so if you've got a laptop, I'll show you the site. This is the PB wiki that I've put together. If you've got a laptop, if you go to view all pages, just scroll down, you'll see numbered frameworks here. If you click rename and just put your name on that, that would be grand and then fill in, fill in the um, framework. And before I forget, in critiques and comments there is a survey. I'd really appreciate it if you could fill in that survey for me. If you don't have a laptop, Find somebody who has a handout. In the handout, you will find an empty framework. And what I'd like you to do is work in pairs. Look at the questions, fill in the framework. Thank you. OK, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to interrupt you, because I can hear some fantastic conversations going on. I think what, what would be a useful way, uh, the way that I really like to use this model and framework is maybe over a half a day with a group of people um, who come with a specific objective in mind, something that they, they know that they want to improve and to facilitate the session quite carefully in a step-by-step -step type format rather than saying, okay guys, we've got this tool, away you go. So I see it very much as a, uh, something that you work in collaboration with, with other people. I'm going to, to wrap up now because I can see that uh, it's nearly lunchtime. So the model, it's very much thank you for your valuable feedback and thank you for taking the time to, to have a go using it. It's very much I'm evaluating it, changing it, and I'm going to hopefully do some research around it to see, see does it actually work or not. Um, but one thing that I was really keen to do through this model was to still take into account all of the valuable things that ICT can offer to learners, but very much focus on the learners and the learning experience and the whole set of theories and ideas and research behind that to inform how we design and blend face-to-face um, -face and online. So, thank you very much indeed for listening. If you've got any questions, um, either drop me a line on the PB Wiki or email me. Um, I'll be very happy to answer any questions you might have. On behalf of